you can see here some kind of a stick or pole under the water and it tends to move in the direction that the duck is moving. I'm guessing they put a string around the duck and connected it to this pole and are controlling it out of the shot somehow. And then in this shot, you can clearly see the string. Notice here when Gilligan goes in after the duck, he either has a string already connected to his wrist or he grabs it when he first sort of dives into the water. But you can see the string here and he probably pulls on the string so that the duck will come toward him. And this is more than likely the string again. It's headed in the right direction, although I suppose it could be a piece of water grass. This is a case of using a shot earlier in the show that's really intended for later in the show. When we see the duck in his cage in the background, you can see some brick and mortar like in a wall, when in reality it should be the professor's pants and then it switches back to this uh, brick background again. This shot is used later in the dream sequence in the jail scene, which I will show you then. And here we have a ventriloquist duck. Well, I think... You can hear it squawking two to three times, and if you look, its bill is not moving in this shot. Well, I think... Well, I think... And here we see the duck's routine again, quacking, and Gilligan responding to the quacking, and the duck's bill is totally closed. Gonna be cooked. <laughs> Get it again. Gonna be cooked. <laughs> Get it again. Here is the actual sequence in which they properly use the brick and mortar wall behind the duck because he is supposed to be in a jail cell. And here's Gilligan coming out as the sheriff from those cells. Here is a case of very fast hands from the guns to the front. If he could really move his hands and draw that fast, he would certainly be able to protect his duck. Here is a situation where the medium shot and the close-up shot were two different setups in order for the gag to work. If you look at the medium shot, you can see that the board behind his heels is a solid board. It's more telling here when you see the close-up. The board behind the boots is now cut away, giving them a place to anchor the spurs, and it's probably a stuntman doing it. But also the boots in this one look like suede, and in the other one, I'll show you here, they kind of have a shine to them. And there's some other little inconsistencies. So obviously this was set up and done at a different time. Here is one I must admit I have worked on forever and I cannot decipher what it is. There is some black, looks like fine spray painting on this bench behind them. And if you flip it and enhance it and do everything to it like I did, it looks like it says IBM-BWA Club. Now it's quite possible that IBM had some kind of clubs in because they were really coming out with stuff. They had introduced their 360 computer in 1964 but I couldn't find anything to match those letters. If anybody has any ideas, please send me an email. I don't know why I pick on the poor professor, but sometimes I kind of keep track of the times that he's wrong. Okay, then we're saved. Those plants aren't poisonous. And here he was wrong about the plants being poisonous, which was a good thing for the castaways, but they could have probably all starved to death due to his lack of knowledge on these plants. There are two things to notice in this final shot. When Gilligan releases the duck, first you can see that the poor thing falls to the ground in the first shadow. And then it must fall in front of a uh, lower light because the shadow is huge on the castaways, which means the duck was right in front of that light. <laughs> 